smokers on the front porch singing an old familiar song. The tractor's in the barn and the pastor's freshly mown. Look in through the screen door, the aroma draws you in to the heart of the home where old memories begin. Sherry's in the kitchen, cooking with her friends, sharing recipes together, stories and songs, making new memories the heart of the home. Welcome to Heart of the Home. Oh, country living. It doesn't get any better than this. I'm back home. I love it. I love it. Spring is just around the corner, and I know that things will be blooming and things will be growing and herb gardens will be coming along. And I have a young man joining me today who is the master of herb gardening, Hans Ruford. Welcome, Sunshine. Thanks, thanks. thanks for having me again. Now let's talk about the idea of you being <coughs> the author of this fabulous cookbook. I love it. Well, thank you. We have waited and waited and <laughs> waited. I had no idea how great it was going to be. It is fabulous. I'm really proud of it. Thank you. Now, your wife had a little bit to do with photography. Yeah, she's uh, just naturally gifted at that. And, uh, she is great. I mean, there's a lot, yeah. of good, uh, a lot of good photography. Now, let's there. talk about, we said we're going to choose some local recipes. And I ask you about blueberry cornbread. Mm -hmm. Why in the world would you do blueberry cornbread? Well, you know, you've had, uh, you've had like hoe cakes and grill <coughs> cakes with uh, cornmeal. And you eat those with, with syrup and those mm -hmm. kind of things, too. So I love that combination of of uh, sweet corn with something else sweet and I thought the acidity of the, of the blueberries would be good. Maybe I overthink things sometimes but, uh, <laughs> but uh, I just thought let's, let's give it a go and it came out really nice. Well it looks great. Now talk about ramps because is, is spring ramp season? Yeah right around April is when you'll have ramps uh, especially in our area. Uh, in fact for the book we went up to uh, I think it's on US Highway 1 in Fannin County way up and there's a state park up there and uh, I got to ride a horse for the first time and, uh, walked bow-legged for several days afterwards, oh, wow. uh, but we went way up in the mountains. And when you when you come across ramps, you actually smell them before you see them uh, when they're when they're ripe, and uh, and then before you know it, you're standing in a whole patch of these of these ramps. And a lot of folks in in the mountain areas they'll discard the greens and just eat the sort of bulbs. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't know what ramps are, they're uh, they're a wild garlic. They're sort of in the leek family, and they are very they're pungent. strong. Yeah, they're very Woo! pungent. But the greens uh, you would love because they taste just like sort of garlicky spinach. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know how much you love spinach, and that's oh, really I do. what uh, they, they really taste like garlic kissed spinach. Um, and and so, is it uh, one time a year? Yeah, that's, that's the only time they come up. And people have tried to transplant them from those higher elevations to like your backyard, mm -hmm. and they'll grow for one season, but they'll never come back. Wow! So they have to be in that that high elevation, uh, and they like the, the cold or the, you know. In fact, when we went ramp hunting the last time, there was still snow on the ground when we uh, when we were up there in the mountains. So. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Now, is that something? Did Indians plant ramps? Uh, Where you know, did they come they're from? So they're, uh, it's actually interesting. The, the city of Chicago is named after ramps. There was an Indian word called Chickagua, which meant the stinking place, mm -hmm. uh, which is Chicago. It probably, is, <laughs> probably still is the stinking and place. And for you folks in Chicago watching us, we did not mean no, no, anything but, offensive. No, that's, um, <laughs> so they, again, they, they, they're growing in the north as well. Um, so, But it, it was a part of their regular diet. And just like how garlic uh, was believed to keep away evil spirits and mm -hmm. vampires in, in old, early Appalachia, uh, some of those first settlers used ramps in the same way. It was supposed to keep away the evil spirits. And Hans, I've I've smelled and tasted ramps. Mm -hmm. It will keep anything well, away. But, <laughs> but honestly, if you do them right, um, they're they're just like the best garlic or onion. They aren't offensive if you do uh -huh. them correctly. But you can like when you start pickling ramps, then it can be a little woofy, you know. Right. So, uh, but I love them. I think that's then, and that's kind of one of the little food adventures. Um, I got to do a show for Georgia Public Broadcasting. Uh, which starts in April, mm -hmm. and it's called Hans Cooks the South. Do and we have a date yet for the first show? No, it's going to be on, in, on their Saturday morning lineup, but uh, okay. I'm not sure exactly the date yet. But one of the cool things was I got to really kind of do all these food adventures, and, and mm -hmm. we started, uh, we really kind of followed the, the story of Georgia agriculture, starting in the spring with asparagus and ramps and ending mm -hmm. in the fall with, with pecans. So uh, as things became ripe and ready, we went to the farm or to the orchard or in the mountains and, and discover those ingredients. Well, this is a perfect example. Welcome to Georgia. I make world famous peach cobbler and everybody loves my peach cobbler recipe. I've never seen a peach that looked as good as your photo. That and, and, is gorgeous. And you've never smelled them like that either. When you oh, go down to, uh, to Fort Valley in Peach County, mm -hmm. um, I mean, that, that's what you smell. And you remember that from being a kid when peaches smelled like peaches. Oh, man. And, uh, and we'll talk a little more later, but that's, that's kind of what the, we talk about in the book too, about finding these uh, local ingredients that are bred for flavor and taste, not mm -hmm. bred to be shipped. Mm -hmm. And those ones you buy at most grocery stores are bred to, to not bruise and to ship well, and so they don't taste like anything. Right. So 
Uh, I'm a big proponent of eating local, and so there's a lot of that in the book as well. Well, I, I was so impressed with it, and I just kind of sat, and, and knowing you as a, you know, I've known you since you were four years old. Yeah. It, it is a part of your legacy, it's a part of your history, but it is the very best of what you do. Mm -hmm. And and we all know that you um, aren't much of a dessert cook, but no, I no. found this awesome dessert recipe I can do this oh, in yeah. 30 seconds. And it's Rocky Road. And my kids it's love so to do it. It's so simple. Yeah. So there are simple recipes. There are some pretty detailed recipes mm -hmm. in here. But it all is from your heart. And yeah. I said, that's going to be the cool thing because I've known you a long, long time. You started in the kitchen at the Woodbridge Inn. And when we come back, we're going to talk about that. Right now, we're going to go to some of my favorite music that started in Jasper, Georgia. I think we're going to feature Angel Spirit. These young ladies started here in Jasper, Georgia and been here forever. Sit back and enjoy a great song by Angel Spirit. Just a sinner saved by grace I'm headed for a better place That's all that I can claim in this world when my race down here is run and I face the setting sun, holy angels come and take me to my home. Holy angels take me home, I've been waiting for so long to go and rest beside the river's flow. When I step inside the gate, I will see just what awaits. Holy angels come and take me to my home. When I reach that golden strand Yonder in the promised land All my loved ones will Be waiting at the throne Best of all we'll see the King How we'll shout and how we'll sing when we hear the Master say you've made it home. Holy angels, take me home. I've been waiting for so long to go and rest beside the river's flow. When I step Inside the gate, I will see just what awaits. Holy angels come and take me to my home. Wow, what great music. Now, Hans, those are local grown girls. You're a local grown boy. You came yep. here when you were four years mm -hmm. old. And we've talked about this in the past. We have a history because I worked at the Woodbridge Inn. When I left Atlanta and came to Jasper, not many job opportunities no, yeah. here. So I landed at the Woodbridge Inn. I was the baker. I made desserts. I made cornbread. I made biscuits before your mom and dad took over. Right. Actually, for the first owner. And um, through the years, I worked for several owners who were not successful. Your parents were very successful. But with that success came a little bit of failure as a family because there were no vacations, honey. You were always well, working. We did uh, We did take some good vacations, but we... Uh, they, I guess what my parents regret is they couldn't come to our basketball games or mm -hmm. tennis matches, those kind of mm -hmm. things. We, we work in the restaurant business when other people are on holiday. So, right. of course, we worked Thanksgiving or, you know, around Christmas as well. So, um, then those were our busiest times, too. So, those were definitely stressful times growing up. So, But from that experience, you learned enough to get yourself to the Food Network. Yeah, I think I, had a, I developed a, a hard uh, work ethic as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we always had to work. But... I have to tell you, when I started in the kitchen, you know, my dad was on dialysis. Uh, we thought he was going to die, and so I wanted to learn how to cook, not as a pr profession, but just because I wanted to learn it. I thought, you know, we're going to lose this great resource. And so mm -hmm. uh, he had his dialysis pole, and he was sitting there, and I was 18 years old. I'd never cooked an egg in my life, nothing. I'd never cooked anything. You know, cereal and milk was pretty much the extent of my culinary prowess. Um, 
But uh, after the first night of me in the kitchen, he told my mom, there's no way he's going to be able to do it. It was a disaster. <laughs> you know, he's got two left hands, two left feet. There's just no way he's going to be able to do it. Uh, but he, he would sit there and sort of just bark instructions with no clear you uh -huh. know, path on why I we're doing I for your daddy. Yeah. I know exactly how he barked so, uh, instructions. But once, once I kind of got, you know, got the hang of it or whatever, I just ran with it. And, I, and mm -hmm. I still am running with it because, as you know, you never stop learning. Mm -hmm. And that's the great thing about this as a profession or as a hobby or, or just uh, you know, somebody who enjoys food. Uh, as soon as you think you've got it kind of figured out, you know, here comes the import you know, a mango or whatever. It is. Just something new kind of comes into the equation or a new technique of cooking. And mm -hmm. uh, I mean, for 2,000 years, we've been learning how to cook, and we're still learning how to cook. And so uh, it's just, I, I love it. One of my favorite things that you make ever is the carrot bisque. Mm -hmm. I think it's in there. It's in here. Yeah. I was so impressed. But, again, my favorite thing to make for dinner is reservations. reservations. Well, you can make can the chef at the Woodbridge Inn now make your carrot you know, I don't bisque? Know, I don't know if he has or not, but we're going to... We need to uh, teach him. incorporate some of these recipes, I mm -hmm. think, into the Woodbridge menu. Because that, right. was, that was always my... I think I even mentioned that was sort of my always... Uh, uh, my little old lady soup. Not, not that you're one of those. I, oh, yes, I hear no, no. you. <laughs> but but we, we would get sort of the after-church crowd. and and, and they would come in and ask you, do you have the carrot bisque? Uh -huh. And uh, all a of them A little bit thought, sweet. A little bit absolutely. tangy. And that, that ginger gives it a little mm -hmm. bit of a, a, not heat, but you know, it's just a, a spice. Wonderful. But every every one of them always thought that I was making it just for them. You oh, know? yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. But no, I, would, I think it's a really good one as well. It is yeah. a great recipe. Now, let's talk about the choices. I have some recipes that people sent me this week. Have you ever had broccoli cornbread? No. Uh -uh. Well, I'm going to share this with you because I know you love broccoli. Oh, yeah, and cornbread. And a lady sent this in to me from Alto, Georgia, and another lady sent me a baked sweet potato souffle crunch, Miss Edith Hensley. This is a recipe a lot like many people's sweet potato recipe, but a little bit different. In the mm. same week, another lady sent me one. Recipes are only a beginning. Sure. And that's the thing. You start with ingredients you like. And if your family likes one thing more than another, swatch, you know, sure. switch it out a little right. bit. Don't right. don't get so set into they this. Oh, get, you can't. People do get this. blinders on, and they feel mm -hmm. like. And in fact, I've the, I start the book out with a little chapter on recipes because I, I kind of compare it to, to driving. In that, as long as you get to where you want to go, you mm -hmm. know, some some people might send you on the highway, some people might send you on a scenic route, some people mm -hmm. might say take a plane. But as long as you get there, uh, it doesn't matter how you get there. And so mm -hmm. I think people are too they're too concerned about the journey, not about the you know the results. So. Um, actually, there's, there's something that I'm going to make you read. Uh, okay. my, my dad taught me something about ingredients that I think uh, this right here. Okay. I'm going to make you read that on your show out loud. Oh, no. Now, this is Christian Network Television. Well, that's you why I altered the, the, the quote. <laughs> you can't make chicken salad out of chicken poop. And knowing your daddy, he probably said poop, something poop else. Poop was not the word. But, no, no, no. But, but that's true. But that is true. You can't use inferior ingredients and expect mm -hmm. to get superior results. Right. So I think if you're, as long as you're starting with great things like fresh, you know, stone ground cornmeal and blueberries, uh -huh. how can you mess that? You, know, you really can't mess it up. But if right. you're starting with, you know, half rotten something or whatever you, you can't make it into something that it's not that's right so if you start with high quality ingredients you'll always end up with with high quality foods well you started the cover with one of my favorite things a fresh tomato and i told you today we're going to share a recipe with folks that i did several years ago it is scallop tomatoes they're not even fresh tomatoes but I use a good canned brand and it was in the dead of winter i told you this mm -hmm. i was having a dinner party you know how you get everything done and you're in a panic. Do I have enough food? So I ran to the cabinet and I grabbed several cans of tomatoes. And this recipe evolved from that. Sit back, take notes. This is very, very simple. And if you like tomatoes and you like a little garlic, I think you're going to like this one, guys. And tonight on Heart of the Home, we're going to do a really simple recipe. My guest, Johnson Collins, said she's not crazy about tomatoes, but I'm going to make a dish you might like. You like pizza? Mm -hmm. yes. yes, so you've eaten pizza on tomatoes, and these have a few of the spices that pizza has, and we're going to have mozzarella cheese, so you might end up liking this, and it's got garlic. And you know, our buddy that films this for us has got a horrible cold, and we don't want to get her cold, so we're going to stuff her full of garlic, aren't we? Yeah. I think that's a good plan. This is a really quick and simple recipe. The ingredients are Hunt's tomatoes. We are using two cans of diced and one can of whole that we're going to actually cut in half. Uh, mozzarella cheese, a little bit of sugar, a stick of butter, salt, pepper, garlic salt, a few bacon bits, and Johnson. Garlic crisp. Garlic crisp. And Johnson is going to actually, you're just going to break all those up in little pieces, and we're going to add them to this. We're going to bake it, antioxidants from the tomatoes, a few spices, a whole lot of garlic, and it's going to be a quick and simple recipe. Okay, Miss Johnson, now your job is to crush all those little crisps that are left. Right into crushing. Okay, 
Okay, Miss Johnson, we've put two cans of the diced tomatoes in here. And to that, we're gonna add a can of whole tomatoes. And I told you this is simple. It's gonna get a little bit of sugar, not much, because the tomatoes are naturally sweet. But we're just gonna sprinkle it with a little bit of sugar. And we're gonna add black pepper. And a little bit of garlic salt. Some onions. This should be a good antioxidant recipe, shouldn't it? It should also whew, keep everybody from getting a cold. Cut the butter up in just large chunks. It will melt and make this even crispier with a garlic crisp because the butter and the crisp will melt together. So we're gonna add a few bacon bits to this. And we're using the real bacon bits. Um, you can fry your own or you can buy these that come in the package, but these are the real ones. They're not those hard ones that come in the can. Now, Miss Johnson is going to add the garlic crisp. And we need these really, really crushed up good. Have you got them? I think you can crush them a little bit more. All right, let's see how those fit. Oh man, that looks perfect. See, we're just gonna sprinkle these on top, which is gonna add the flavor of the garlic. And then it'll add the texture of the crunchiness. And I'm gonna cover this in mozzarella cheese, and we're gonna bake it. Okay, here we go, we're gonna stick it in the oven. 30 minutes at 325. There you go. Well, Johnson, it's ready. We're gonna pretend this is upside down pizza. You weren't sure you'd like scalloped tomatoes, but if we pretend the crust is on top, there's the cheese, the tomatoes are in the bottom, antioxidants, a lot of garlic, good for you with a cold. We're gonna pretend it's pizza and we're gonna try it. It smells great, doesn't it? Yes. It smells good. It's gonna be very hot, I can assure you of that. Mm. Guys, this was a simple recipe. It was very inexpensive and we used my leftovers, didn't we? Yes, we did. Gotta use those leftovers. Um, antioxidants, a little calcium. It was easy. It was fun. And we'll see you again next Thursday night. Bye bye. Bye, bye Johnson. Folks, I promised you a simple, simple recipe using canned tomatoes. Now, Hans, let's talk about the freshness of fruit and how important it is as you and I have something in common. Yep. I lost my husband to cancer. Do you know how many blackberries I fed that man fighting cancer? Mm. Do you know how many, um, it was amazing, the things I tried to feed him yep. to kill the cancer. Yep. And we know that you have done well. You had a little saying, somebody sent you a shirt. Yep. You started battling cancer a month or so after the Food Network? two weeks after the Food Network. Wow. You know? I was diagnosed wow. the day before my 33rd birthday. So it was July 12th. And your sister Sonia had just lost her life to yeah, cancer. Yeah, a year prior, yeah. She was how old? Uh, she was 34. Yeah. So your parents, their son has just come home from New York. Everything was great with the Food Network and you're immediately diagnosed with cancer. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I was having sort of these, um, I guess, you know, symptoms that I would have just chalked off to stress because the Food Network thing was very stressful. I mean, it's a big... Oh, no, I can't imagine big, that. <laughs> uh, it was fun. It was tremendous fun, yeah. but uh, it, was, it was stressful. And uh, so, I, you know, I was having some weakness issues, some dizziness issues, and I just kind of just pawned them off to, uh, well, just, I'm just stressed out, you mm -hmm. know, kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. um, but obviously that, that wasn't the case and, uh, you know, lost half of my stomach and half of my esophagus. Uh, to cancer, which obviously this ties into the title of the book, to eat like there's no tomorrow. Right, because and I, I, almost, I think that's the thing know. we want to share with people. This is truly not just a cookbook. It is your life. Yeah. It is your life, and you talk about every aspect of it, the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah, and, and, but I feel like it's not so autobiographical that it, it's not relevant to other people. I mean, that's mm -hmm. why I, I tried to have some of these life lessons learned, like on optimism, on the importance right. of family, and, right. and also the importance of, of eating well. Um, so to where, yes, they're, they're my stories from my perspective, but they're relevant to other people. Absolutely. And, and the thing we did when we, you know, when you get that cancer diagnosis, what did I do wrong? Well, it doesn't matter. No. This is something that's happened to you and you just move on. We, talk, we talked about spinach. We ate spinach every day. We did blackberries every day. We did everything we thought would help. And inevitably, the end came and, and the, quickly. And the thing about it is, too, of course, um, and we know, we know it now more than ever, it's, it's that the spinach and blackberries needed to happen early, so much exactly. earlier in life. It's about prevention. Exactly. You know, it's 
Uh, there's only so much foods can do once you've been diagnosed, but there's mm -hmm. so much it can do prior to diagnosis. So right. that's that's the important thing is eating those good things. And, and and I'm not I'm not a health food nut to the point where I think anybody should be you know every single meal has to be. But I think sort of seventy thirty. If you're eating seventy percent, you're proud of telling people what you're eating. And the other thirty percent might be a cheeseburger or a milkshake. Mm -hmm. and that's fine. I mean, don't. Right. Uh, I still want you to enjoy food, but uh, I think there's a lot to be said about the power of food. Uh, and, and not only preventing, but also uh, combating cancer. Well, let's talk about where people can meet you because you're going to be in Atlanta or in, in Marietta right, in right. the near future. Yeah, the Metropolitan Home Cooking Show uh, is coming up in April at the Cobb Galleria Center. I think it's the second weekend of April. Um, I think it's April 18th and 19th. And Paula Dean, uh, the Neelys, Giada De Lorenzis, um, Guy Fieri, and Bobby Flay, and then mm -hmm. some reason me too. I love the Neelys. Love yeah. the Neelys. So, uh, they're expecting 18,000 people there, and so you have to buy tickets ahead of time, and uh, mm -hmm. there's going to be food demos, but it's also going to be kind of like an exposition where there'll, there'll be people selling spices and stuff, so uh, it should be a really fun thing. Mm -hmm. I'm actually doing one uh, in March at, when West Palm Beach as well. They asked me to come do that one. Same group of presenters, mm -hmm. um, so it's quite a quite a haul to go to West Palm Beach, though. But uh, And let's share your website. My website, everybody knows, is heartofthehomerecipes.com. Mm -hmm. Your cookbook can be found through your website? Yeah, it's just hanscooks.com. So really Okay. H a n s c o o k s dot com. Well, your life has been so. I can't tell you that the ladies, still the little old grannies, we voted for Hans. Oh, yeah. I said yes. I know you did. Um, the whole town was rooting for you. Oh, yeah. And and as you have faced your battle with cancer last week or so, you had a little bit of problems. Yep. Everything is good now. The mm -hmm. biopsy came back great. So we have to tell people great news. And, and, you know, the great news about it is you can eat like there's no tomorrow and do it sensibly. You have some great recipes in here. Thank you. You have some great recipes. And I loved, I told you the blue and blue would be Nick's favorite. Yep. That's one of those things. Um, you've chosen a good variety. And, some and simple things. And it's a big local angle on it, too, mm -hmm. because I kind of feel like it needs to stay in our economy. In fact, I had the book printed locally as well right. because I, I feel like that uh, there's no reason I should spend my money to China for those no, kind of things. No, that's what I was going to tell you. The guys who did my calendar did your cookbook, mm -hmm. and they that's did right. a great job. They did, So yeah. that's very important that we do keep the money locally. Now, we tell you every week, go to local restaurants. Mm -hmm. How do folks get to the Woodbridge Inn? Uh, well, just downtown Jasper. You downtown. Cross, cross that bridge when you get there kind of thing. But, that's uh, right. Uh, it's also the, web, the website is woodbridgeinn.com. Net, uh, and it's honestly one of the biggest landmarks in downtown Jasper, right. so you, you can't miss it. And go by and have dinner, and remember, tell them Sherry Martin's favorite thing to make for dinner, reservations, <laughs> of course, at the Woodbridge Inn. We hope that you will come back and join us every week. We come to you. We love sharing our stories with you, and please send me your recipes and share your stories with me. If you have a great success story, if you have something going on we need to talk about, please get in touch with me at heartofthehomerecipes.com. Right now, we're going to close... I think today we're going to close with some local music, maybe by the Barker Brothers. Sit back and enjoy. We'll be with you again soon. Go down, Moses. Can't you hear God calling thee? Go down, Moses. Set my people free. Spoke to Moses in a burning bush. The fire of God came down. God said, Moses, take off your shoes. You stand on holy ground. Go down, Moses. Can't you hear God calling thee? Go down, Moses. Set my people free. Save the firstborn son. Oh, thou Moses, can't you hear God calling thee? Go down, Moses, set my people free. This angel came on quickly, wrapped deep in the night, but the Israelites were ready. To take pride. Oh, thou Moses, can't you hear God calling me? Go down, Moses, set my people free. God 
God still speaks to us today through the fire that burns within. Only the blood of Jesus can save us from our sin. Oh, thou children, can't you hear God calling thee? Go down, children, let Jesus set you free. Yeah. 